If you're a regular viewer of Healing Quest, you know we visited some pretty unusual places around the world and met some pretty interesting people. Well, from Boulder to Budapest, Houston to Hanoi, we have found the pioneers on the frontiers of healing. And now Michelle's going to take us to New Jersey. It may not sound all that exotic, but inside one futuristic building, neuroscientists are exploring the deepest reaches of our inner space. That's right, Judy and Roy. These pioneers are exploring our brains, what makes them work and what makes them malfunction. Their discoveries could have tremendous implications for helping us stay focused and even survive in the modern world. And they could someday help heal some of the most intractable problems of the brain. The human brain is one of the most remarkable and arguably the most complex device in the universe. Maybe 100 billion, 200 billion cells that are connected to each other. On average, maybe each one is connected to about a thousand others. And that gives you about a hundred trillion connections at a minimum. In the shining complex of the Neuroscience Institute at Princeton University, three scientists are on an expedition into inner space. <laughs> The team leader is Jonathan Cohen, co-director of the Neuroscience Institute. Assisting him are Nicholas Turk Brown, associate professor of psychology and neuroscience, and Ken Norman, professor of psychology and neuroscience. Our hope and expectation is that by getting a deeper understanding of how the brain works under normal conditions, we'll have better insight and a more rational basis for figuring out how to fix it in ways in which, in, 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 in conditions under which it goes awry. In addition to the complexity of the brain, what we're really interested in is how does it give rise to our mind, our thoughts, our beliefs, and so on. So the brain has really powerful mechanisms for learning from mistakes, right? But in order to get those mechanisms to like function with maximum efficiency, you want the feedback you're delivering to be a prompt and specific. To help develop that learning system, the team at Princeton is using a big machine many of us can recognize and some of us have spent time in. It's an MRI, or Magnetic Resonance Imaging Scanner, and today PhD candidate Megan de Betancourt is its pilot. I get really rich data. I get fMRI data from the brain, and so um, I'm looking at how um, the uh, brain function changes with different sorts of tasks that people are doing and you heard Megan say fMRI the F stands for functional and that's what makes the picture she's seeing different from a static MRI or an x-ray photo it's critical technology for achieving a key goal of the research here helping us all better control our attention and our brain you know, there's a million things going on in the world at every moment um, that we could be paying attention to. And obviously, it's very important for many behaviors, if not most, to be able to select out what's really important right now and pay attention to that. And that is a, a, a facility that is, you know, in many ways, one of the ones that, that um, distinguishes us as, as humans. And it's very closely related to something we refer to as cognitive control the ability to hold in mind a particular intention or goal or purpose and then control one's behavior in the service of achieving that, that goal or, or, or realizing that purpose. The scientists work with as many as 30 volunteers from the Princeton campus. Oh, what is it? Okay. So that's um, called the head coil. So that we just snap on over the head. He, now Lee's adjusting the mirror so he can see what's on the projector screen behind him. So. Okay, so I see something up there. Um, oh, oh, there. Uh, oh, so that's my his brain. Goodness. And so... Um, that's his brain. The researchers want to better understand what happens in the brain when attention starts to wander. So the volunteer is being shown pictures of faces and places and responding to simple commands by pushing one of two buttons. The technology here makes it possible to measure how closely he's paying attention to what he's being asked to do. We're taking advantage of some advances that have been made over the past 10 years to not just look at what parts of the brain are most active at a given point in time, but rather look at the entire pattern of activity in the brain. The goal is to see if it's possible to intervene as the brain's attention is beginning to wander so that the lapse in focus can be prevented. And the other thing we did is we got that working at a speed that allowed us to get the information about what the brain was doing and, and decide what it was doing fast enough to be able to give it back to the person so that it was useful as feedback. So the blue part there is the temporal lobe. So um, that's one of the lobes in the brain that we're studying. And um, 
It has a lot of different parts to it, but some parts are important for vision, and some parts are also really important for memory, and some parts both. They're very important for attention, what we've been studying in this project. Um, and then in red, I've highlighted just a, a slightly like um, more specific area that's really important for looking at these pictures of faces and places. The objective is to create tools and techniques to improve cognitive control and help avoid lapses in attention that have negative, even dangerous consequences. Uh, say you're driving along and you space out and then uh, 10 minutes later you crash the car, right? That's huge negative feedback, but it's not a great learning signal, right? Because you made the critical mistake 10 minutes ago. And so one way of thinking about the kind of work we're doing here is we want to give you feedback uh, that you messed up the moment you did it, right? And in order to do that, we need to actually look in your brain and decode the signals that are causing you to pay attention, right? And monitor them and notice the moment when they lapse, right? And at that moment, tell you, you know, exactly what you're doing wrong. The research could hold great promise in dealing with common and serious disorders of the mind. There are particular cases where people are really unable to control their attention in psychological disorders. Depression is a perfect example of this. One of the main symptoms of depression is what's known as the negative attentional bias. You're in a bad mood and you're focusing on bad things, that worsens your mood, which makes you focus on bad things more downward spiral. and downward spiral into major depression. And so this seems like a particular domain where training people to attend differently could provide incredible benefits. The Princeton team is also working to use their research to help control depression. They're learning if the brain can be taught to pay more attention to some things, it can be trained to pay less attention to others. Right, and so you can think about post-traumatic stress disorder as people who have these super strong traumatic memories that sort of dominate over everything else that they're trying to do. And so to treat these people, uh, one of the things you might want to do is to try to make their memory uh, weaker and less intrusive, right? And so the thought is the more you know about the basic mechanisms of memory weakening in the brain, the more effective we're going to be at, at weakening these intrusive traumatic memories. Professor Cohen says that for all the inroads his team is making, their level of progress roughly matches that of a car mechanic who doesn't yet understand internal combustion. But the promise of their work is truly awe-inspiring. What's being learned here could someday help us deal with everything from the daunting distractions of daily life to bigger challenges like phobias, ADD, PTSD, and depression. Trying to understand what goes wrong in psychiatric illnesses or neurologic illnesses, that is, the disturbances of the mind that are manifest in those illnesses, is going to require ultimately an understanding of how the system works, what the brain does. There are arguably more possible circuits in the human brain than there are molecules in the universe. And, you know, in some ways you could say that this is perhaps, you know, one of, if not the greatest remaining challenge in science. One big impact this story had on me was being reminded about how powerful the brain is in dealing with the mistakes we make. Hearing a neuroscientist say this helps awaken an understanding in us that there are many ways to heal ourselves that we haven't even yet imagined. As a matter of fact, we have tools available right now that can help us with our attention issues. These tools and techniques have been handed down by spiritual masters and indigenous healers for ages. The first one is meditation, because that's how we practice minding the mind. It's how we get out of our mental state and into mindfulness. The second one is conscious awareness. That's based on the awareness that in every moment, we have the opportunity to guide our mind in the direction we would like. It's like we take back the steering wheel so we can guide ourselves in the right direction. And the third technique is making one and two, meditation, and conscious awareness daily rituals. Those two things enable us to replace old patterns and create fresh neural pathways. Thanks, Michelle, that's great advice. And coming up next, more great advice, this time on the best in brain food. And you want the smaller fishes like salmon, not the big, huge fishes like swordfish and tuna, as delicious as those things are. They accumulate mercury. The bigger the fish and the higher on the food chain, the more it accumulates mercury. You want it to be nice and kind of like red, reddish pink in the middle. And that's your cue 
that your salmon is ready to be taken out of the oven. And some expert insight on why you need to be careful when it comes to buying olive oil. All that, plus a journey into one of the world's most spectacular natural wonders, still to come on this edition of Healing Quest.